Okay, it's Saturday morning. I'm going to bring you a project here that I've been working on for a couple weeks. As you can see from behind me, that's still snow on the ground. It's the middle of February. We moved up to the Port Angeles area a couple years ago for its mild winters, and it has not been anything but mild. We've had snow since the middle of December, and it's still the middle of February now. It's 60 days. First time it was about 4 inches, and then a couple weeks ago, or actually this week, it was almost 6 inches, and it's still here which makes for my barn to be very, very cold. And if you can tell from, I don't even know if this is gonna work. That is the insulation that I have in the barn. The fireplace is gonna keep this whole entire building warm. And while it does a great job, there's just simply no insulation. And that thing is very outdated. I do like the little box on top. It does what it's supposed to. This project started out as a Pinterest idea. If you guys ever been on Pinterest, stay away from it. Great for arts and crafts and all kinds of little fun stuff, but to actually do it in real life, it's a pain. So what I found was a guy was taking milk jugs, just simple everyday milk jugs, melting them down, turning them into blocks, and making hammers out of them. And I thought, you know, I can do that. I got all the tools, I can figure this out. It can't be that, how hard can that be, right? Oh man, two weeks into it, I'm still not done. What I was shooting for is a mortar and pestle, and I'm hoping this morning I can finish it. So I started out taking these milk jugs and cleaning them, cutting them into chunks, and then sticking them in the blender, and then the toaster oven, and then pouring them together, and it was a learning curve the whole way through it. So the blender, the hat was entertaining. It doesn't actually chop milk jugs up into small tiny pieces, it just bounces them around. The toaster oven works, it does get them down because it says you need 350 degrees in order to get these things to melt. It does melt them down, but it takes a long time and a lot of milk jugs to get you anything of any size. What was weird was the stuff doesn't actually melt. It turns into a gummy, gummy bear, gooey, sticky substance that you kind of have to form by hand. And I thought, well, I'll build a little simple form, push it into the form, call it good, turn it on the lathe, and move on. Yes and no, all at the same time. The first go around, I turned it on the lathe and the plastic is extremely soft. I mean, it's just super easy to turn on the lathe until you hit the air bubbles on the inside and then the lathe tool sticks to it and it almost pops itself off. So this morning, we're gonna try it again, only this time I took my, sub, my forms and redid everything. And you're gonna have to look at the blog because this is really one of those things where you need the blog and the video at the same time to get it all to come together. But this nasty, ugly, gooey thing is actually my blank to start with. We use the term blank because it's supposed to be a large block that you can then find your finished product out of somehow. What I'm hoping is that I can put this part here into the lathe that'll hang on to it and it'll spin it and I can clean it all up and come out with a mortar and pestle. So there's one part of it. And there's the other part of it. Isn't that just about as pretty as it can be? If my mother ever saw this, she'd be like, holy smokes, Kevin, just throw that whole thing away. So I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna show a little bit of me working on the lathe. So there is the first mass sitting on the lathe after a little bit of turning. I had to make two different tendons. You'll see that in the blog of getting this thing attached so it's actually firm and not gonna fall off. I did manage to get the front squared up and straight. You can still see the brain-like substance of the nasty mass right in there. But overall, it's pretty well straightened out. Some of that red color, in case you're wondering what that is, that's actually Folgers coffee cans. And then all of the white is the milk jugs itself. And then a little bit of the dark color is just simply dirt or contaminants inside of the plastic itself. And as you can see by all the shavings, we got stuff absolutely everywhere. The plastic is just all over the place, which is fine. It's not too bad. I have quickly figured out to work with my steel lathe tools, not the carbide tools. Uh, the carbide tools are simply so sharp and that stuff is so soft that it's actually stopping the, the blank in mid-progress and almost throwing it off the lathe. So that's where we're at. I'm going to come back to it here in a little bit. Thanks. Okay, so here's the finished product after much trouble and fun and making a mess. But there's the bowl portion. 
Let me just back it up a little bit. It's all of three inches in diameter on the outside and two inches in diameter on the inside and probably about three inches tall. And there's the bottom of it with a little bit of a detail to it. It's fairly light. It's got a little bit of mass to it. The walls are a half inch thick, so they've got plenty of force to them. What was interesting was after all the trouble of mashing and pushing this thing together, I still had air holes. And in fact, when I was drilling out this big hole here, I ran into a large air pocket right in the middle of it. And you can still see that little dimple at the very bottom down there. That's the last of the air pocket. I mean, it was a large, giant air pocket. I was just grateful the air pocket was exactly where I needed it to be, so I didn't have to throw the project away. But there is the red ribbon showing through all of that. That is all Folgers coffee can that's melted down, and I kind of twisted it and blended it into it. And then there is the pestle part of it, which is about five and a half, six inches tall. Uh, inch on the skinny side and an inch and a half on the big side just rounded over and straightened out and then the whole thing is finished with about 400 grit just to give it a little bit of shine and away we go and even the pestle I had to go through and put some epoxy back into some of the bigger holes to fill it back in to get at least solid enough to make a shape that would work so fun little project don't think I'll actually use it in real life it'll sit on a shelf somewhere for a long time but I enjoy doing it